helped us to build Hawaii's plantation village. So some of those that you'll see here are former plantation owners such as uh, Castle and Cook, American Factors, Alexander and Baldwin. And today, of course, Alexander and Baldwin has the remaining sugar plantation on the island of Maui. And the only other plantation left is uh, Gay and Robinson on the island of Kauai. So once there were hundreds of sugar plantations in the islands and uh, today there are only two. And here we have our time tunnel and we're going to leave the present and we're going to go into the past. We're now at the Chinese Society building and the cookhouse. Uh, the original concept for Hawaii's Plantation Village was to move uh, older buildings here and then restore them, but uh, the architect and others found that it would be impractical. So what they did was uh, took measurements of original structures and duplicated them here. And so uh, the two original structures here, the Chinese cookhouse and the Wakamiya Inari Shrine that we'll come to later. These taro fields that you see now uh, were planted here since the first of the year. And um, this has sort of gone full circle in a way because <clears throat> many years ago, uh, these were taro fields supported by the springs. Waipahu means gushing water, water bursting out of the ground. So this was a natural place for Hawaiians to grow taro. Uh, eventually, with the, after the arrival of the Chinese, uh, many of them left the plantations and saw our opportunities in growing rice in many of these taro fields. And so by 1899, Hawaii was the third largest producer of rice in the United States behind Louisiana and Georgia. Bon dia, this is the Portuguese family home. Um, most of the Portuguese who came to Hawaii came from the Azores. Uh, the next largest group came from Madeira. So most of them were island people um, they felt very comfortable living here in Hawaii, so most of the Portuguese stayed here. This structure was funded by a grant from United Airlines. A lot of people don't realize, but William Patterson, who started United Airlines, was born here in Waipahu in 1899. Uh, his mother was Portuguese, and so it was sort of a natural fit uh, for the funding to come from United for the Portuguese house. This is the achote plant, otherwise known as a lipstick plant. Uh, the seeds are uh, used from the dried pods to color food um, in ganduri rice, which is like a Spanish rice, and also pasteles, which is made with grated green banana and uh, pork. And uh, the, the red, the seeds are cooked in oil, which gives it uh, the red color so that uh, it looks more uh, appealing to eat. We're now leaving the Spanish camp, as we call it, most Portuguese and Puerto Ricans live in the same camps. And we're now coming to what we call the Japanese camp. And here uh, is a duplex. Um, this structure represents 1910, and it was built for two families. Um, I believe one of the reasons was to accommodate the picture brides. Uh, between 1908 and 1924, about 20,000 picture brides were brought to Hawaii, most of them Japanese although there were some Koreans and others, but um, uh, so this was a quick way. Originally when they, when they married, uh, there wasn't enough room, uh, and so many of them had to live in the same dormitories where the single men lived before they got married, and uh, so this would have been a, a faster way to provide housing for them. So this is their living room, and uh, in here we have a Shinto shrine, on the wall there, and also a botsadan, which is the family altar in the Buddhist tradition. The sewing machine and the iron uh, kind of displays what uh, women would do to earn extra money to supplement their family incomes. There were a lot of single men on the plantation, and so um, there was a need for someone to sew their clothes and perhaps do their ironing as well. The iron on the, on the ironing board is hollow, so they would put hot coals inside to uh, iron their clothes. This is a tofu ya. This is a place for making tofu. 
And the original structure was in Kahuku. Uh, the old sugar plantation there closed in the early 1970s. It was a Castle and Cook company. But this might have been a way to earn extra money and uh, perhaps this uh, somehow how some of our uh, tofu factories might have started in Hawaii. We're coming next to uh, one of the three homes that represent the 1919 period. And uh, what's significant about this is this is the first effort by the planters to standardize the plantation homes. Uh, previously, each plantation sort of did its own thing. And um, I think by standardizing, it was probably more economical. All the houses would look alike and it was easier to build. This is the Wakamiya Inari Shrine. This is the second structure that's an original. It was built about 1914 in the Kaka'ako district of Honolulu. Uh, that's near where Fisherman's Wharf and the ward centers are located. And then in 1918, it was moved to Mo'ili'ili. Ili. By the 1970s, it fell into disuse and disrepair. It was going to be torn down and an effort was made to save it. So eventually, uh, it was brought here and stored in a warehouse uh, for many years until the village was laid out and it was rebuilt and then restored. Um, these two pedestals once held the sculptures of the fox. The fox are the messengers to take the prayers to the gods. And part of the, tradi the tradition as people came to visit is they would ring the bell and that's to wake the spirit, to let the spirit know you're here to pray. And so each person in a group, it's a personal experience with the God. And so each person would ring the bells. And um, there's no spirit dwelling here now, however, since it is a museum. These two pedestals once held the sculptures of the fox, and we're hoping that one day a benefactor will provide the foxes to place on these pedestals once again. This is the community bathhouse, or fudo, and um, the Japanese tradition is always you bathe first before uh, sharing a tub. And so you would use this to scoop the water over yourself out here, and your washcloth and soap is in the wire basket. So you'd lather up and then pour the water over yourself again to rinse yourself off, um, and then get into the tub. Uh, this original structure had a furnace outside where a wood-burning stove would heat the water and the water was piped in. So this is the men's side. Uh, the original building was built by Oahu Sugar Company here in Waipahu. Uh, because the building no longer existed when the village was being put together, uh, this structure was put together based on people's memories of what it looked like. And from here then we'll transition into the women's side. Uh, these are the power boats. Uh, a lot of children who come on tours during the week enjoy this spot because they get to race their little boats here. And um, we'll find that some folks on the mainland also had memories of doing stuff like this. And so just using a simple rubber band for, with the paddle. And uh, there you go. Uh, we're now on the women's side of the bathhouse. And some of the comments people make is they see the women's side is smaller than the men's side and they think it's discrimination against women but uh, there were fewer women uh, on the plantation and so the plantation accommodated the larger group which were the men. This is the barber shop and the barber shop was originally in the Japanese camp here in Waipahu. Uh, here we have the Okinawan family home and it's measured from the original uh, which is in the Hamakua coast of the Big Island of Hawaii. And as I pass by, the next home is the Korean family home, also measured from the Big Island of Hawaii. They're sort of mirrors of, uh, they're just the opposite of each other, the placing of the rooms. And then uh, we'll come to the Filipino uh, camp. We're leaving the Japanese uh, camp now, and we're coming to the Filipino camp. This first structure here is a dormitory for single men. Uh, four rooms, each decorated a little differently to show perhaps what that particular person was interested in. 